Hola, hombre, es un hombre. Y bienvenido a un poco más. I mean, the 39th step, of course, with the event uh, be called Sanctuary of the Inn. With a considerable distance between himself and his pursuers, Hannah makes his next move. Let's play Sanctuary of the Inn. So my guess is that we find an inn, which is Sunday, 24th of May, 1914, Galloway, Scotland. I suppose we find an inn, which will be our sanctuary in this little chaos we're in. Yes. There's a train, train station. There's smoke. And what else? What's happening? The occupants of the carriage were an old shepherd and his dog, a well-eyed brute I mistrusted. The man was asleep and on the cushions beside him was the morning's Scotsman. I suppose we're gonna read this. Okay, apparently there are two things we can do in here. Alright. Scotsman, 25th of May, 1914. Wait, was that all or was there a next? No, nope, that's all. Alright. Oh, he noticed me taking his painting, I mean, uh, newspaper. <laughs> Empire Day murder shocks London. Scot Scotland Yard's top officers have been called into action following the brutal slaying of a decorated British officer in an affluent apartment block in London near Portland Place. The killing took place during last week's Empire Day celebrations. The as yet unnamed man was discovered in the first floor flat on Saturday morning by its valet, a Mr. Paddock. Intriguingly, the victim was not in charge of the apartment, and the owner was not to be found. Even more intriguing is the arrest of a local milkman found whistling in the hallway of the apartment, a mere five minutes away from Oxford Street. Mr. Paddock sprang the alarm and had a young man arrested. Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. McGillivray said his top officers were currently interviewing the suspect. This is one of the most horrendous murders we have had in this part of London for some time. The fact that it happened on, on Empire Day m just makes the whole affair even more abhorrent. Abhorrent. I don't know. We will make sure that no stone is left unturned in bringing the killer to justice. Mr. Paddock had informed the police that the dead man's name was Sir Captain Digby of the 40th Gar Garkas, and he had been at the apartment for four days. As yet, Scotland Yard has been unable to confirm the identity. The details of the murder are also sparse. This is the second dead body to have been found in this very apartment block in the past week. Just six days earlier, an American businessman, identified as a Mr. Christopher Rock, Rick, I mean, was found in his apartment having committed suicide. Neighbor Mrs. Tristan said, This is a respectable part of the city, safe behind closed doors, at least until now. I'm all shook up. I've cancel cancelled my milk order. <laughs> my <laughs> no, Mr. Milkman. Shouldn't have accepted those money. My kidly very acute assured residents that there is nothing to be concerned about, and that there are no apparent connections between the deaths, and that the latest killing is most likely the result of a financial dispute. Uh, close. And the last p uh, paper. Missing airman feared a disaster to Mr. Hamill. Mr. Gustav ha Hamill, the well-known aviator whose intention to attempt a transatlantic fi flight was announced last week, was suspected in London on Saturday morning in order to take part in the aerial derby competition arranged for the af afternoon. He was known to have started from the aerodrome at Villacoble at half past four in the morning, but he failed to put in an appearance in on the English side of the channel, and as the day wore on without bringing any definite news on him, Considerably anxiety on his account gradually made itself felt. Inquiries made in all directions proved fruitless, and yesterday anxiety de deepened into serious alarm. Suffragette outrageous. King's portrayed slash with an axe. The destruction of exhibition pictures, which, uh, which has been recently a feature on the militant suffragist activity in London was adopted in Edinburgh for the first time on Saturday, when a half-length portrait of King George from the brush of Mr. John Lavery, along with a picture of the Queen of the Royal Scottish Academy, Academy was damaged by a woman who slashed it with an axe. In view of similar outrages of late, special precautions have been taken at the Academy with the object of frustrating any attempts to destroy the paintings, but 
When the woman entered the building about noon, no suspicion at first was aroused, though it was remarked afterwards that she had not, as is usually done by late visitors, given an umbrella or article of attire in the keeping of the attendant. Portland Place Killer on the Run, Travelling North New twists and turns in the case of the Portland Place murder as Scotland Yard releases its cr prime suspect and reveals that the true criminal has escaped the capital. Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. McGillivray said we have reason to believe the killer has left London by one of the northern lines. We no longer have reason to suspect that the milkman is our murderer or has any connection with the killing of Captain Theo Theophilus Digby, found dead earlier this week. Captain Digby is reported to have been on home leave and staying with a friend in an apartment near London's affluent Portland Place apartments. Chief Investiga Investigating Officer, Mrs. Scaife, told the Times this was a brutal slaying of an honorable man. We urge anyone who, who may have seen or heard anything on the night of the 33rd of May to come forward and make yourself known. The owner of the apartment is in question, a rich, a Mr. Richard Honey, is still missing. Well, that doesn't sound suspicious at all, now does it? Alright, do something with his cane. I could smell the alcohol on his breath. Yeah, yeah, stupid dog, come on. We're down here. We were approaching the station at which I had got out yesterday. All hold. Um, what? Yes, thank you. Why are we just going back and forth? The potato digging station master had been gingered up into some activity, for the west going train was waiting to let us pass. From it descended three men who were asking him questions. Sitting well back in the shadow, I watched them carefully. Zzz. View from a train. The moors. What is a moor? All the party looked out across the moor where the white road departed. I hoped they were going to take up my tracks there. Three men. I suppose that they were the local police who had been stirred up by Scotland Yard and had traced me as far as this one horse siding. One of them had a book and took down notes. <gasps> Super detective investigator. The old potato digger seemed to have turned peevish. The child who had collected my ticket was talking volubly. <gasps> They're ratting me out! Damn Scotsman. As we moved away from, the station, from that station, the old shepherd began to stir. Why don't you like me, boy? Oi. Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. Why don't you like me? You're on a train, traveling east towards Dumfries, in Scotland. Oh, oh that's what comes of being a teetotaler. I expect my surprise that in him. I should have met a blue ribbon stalwart. St stalwart. Oh, I don't know. Hi, I'm a strong teetotaler. I, I took the pledge last Martin Miss and I haven't touched a drop of whiskey since I. Not even a hug my knee, though I was sair tempted. Oh, 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 that's what I get. I heat better than hellfire and try in looking different ways for the summer. What did it? Here, I drank the car. Brandy. Maybe being a teetotal, I keep it half the whiskey, but I was all I was nip, nip, no idea this brandy and I doubt I'll not be wheeled for the fun, What the hell? I Please learn to speak English, damn Scottish people. <laughs> My plan had been to get out at some station down the line, but the train suddenly gave me a better chance. Run to the hills. I looked out and saw that every carriage window was closed and no human figure appeared in the landscape. Open and run! So I dropped quickly from the carriage. It would have been alright but for that infernal... Is he chasing me? Come on. 
Don't kill the dog, please. I jumped into the river, hello. I could not have made a more public departure if I had left with a bugler and a brass band. Happily, the drunken shepherd provided a diversion. He and his dog, which was at attached by a rope to his waist, suddenly cascaded out of the carriage. Had forgotten me. Someone needs to get some control of that dog, yo. Clearly, he's not a proper owner. Them drunk. I looked back, but there was nothing in the landscape. What's your plan, Mr. Hanney? Just gonna run around here in the wi wilderness? For the first time, I felt the terror of the hunted on me. I. It was not the police that I thought of, but the other folk who knew that I knew Scudder's secret and dared not let me live. I was certain that they would pursue me with a keenness and vigilance unknown to the British law, and that once their grip closed on me, I should find no mercy. Oh, the beautiful Scottish landscape. The mood did not leave me until I had reached the rim of a mountain and flung myself panting on a bridge high above the young waters of the river. We can live out here, you and me, Mr. Richard Henney, out here in the nature. I I have eyes like a hawk, but I couldn't see I could see nothing moving in the whole countryside. Then I looked into the blue May sky, and there I saw that which set my pulses racing. <gasps> it's a plane! I was as certain as if I had been told that that airplane was looking for me, and that it did not belong to the police. These heather hills were no sort of cover if my enemy enemies were in the sky, and I must find a different kind of sanctuary. Collected monoplane. Okay. I kept on words. <gasps> Sanctuary! About six in the evening, I came out of the moor moorland. M moorland. Approach. Approached in. Scottish moss. Uh hmm. Let's see. There are two things that we're gonna be able to do here. Let's see. Nothing here. Oh! Oh! As when a griffin through the wilderness with winged step. As when a griffin through the wilderness with wing and step o'er hell and moody dale pursues the Aramas. Aram. Aramaster. What? Okay, something. Pete spoke and savory something from this from the house. Yes, yes, you and your stupid poem. Good evening to you. It's a fine night for the road. Is that place an inn? At your service. I'm the landlord, sir. And I hope you will stay the night for, to tell you the truth, I've had no company for a week. <laughs> I collected the innkeeper, yay! He's mine now. I pulled myself up on the parapet of the bridge and filled my pipe. I get be I, I began to detect an ally. I get Yo, young, to be an innkeeper. My father died a year ago and left me the business. I lived there with my grandmother. It's a slow job for a young man, and it wasn't my choice of profession. Which was? He actually blushed. He wanted to be a prostitute. I want to write books. <laughs> and what better chance could you ask? Man, I've often thought that an innkeeper would make the best storyteller in the world. Oh, not now. M maybe in the old days when you had pilgrims and ballad makers and highwaymen and mail coaches on the road. But not now. Nothing comes here but motor cars full of fat women who stop for lunch and a fisherman or two in the spring and the shooting tenants in August. There's not much material to be got out of that. 
I want to see a life, to travel the world and write things like Kipling and Conrad. But the most I've done yet is to get some verses printed in Chambers Journal. I looked at the inn, standing golden in the sunset against the brown I've hills. I've knocked a bit about the world, and I wouldn't despise such a hermitage. Do you think that adventure is only found in the tropics or among gentry in red shirts? Maybe you're rubbing shoulders with it at this moment. That's what Kipling says. Brother romance, and all unseen bromance brought up the 915. Um, yes. But here's a true tale for you then. And a month from now, you can make a novel out of it. Ooh. He's gonna tell him his secrets. Don't. Because then he will be killed too. Oh, here we go. A movie time. What's this about? A story of epic proportions. You can't click here, says the game. You're not allowed to. Mr. Richard Hannay was a successful mining magnate from Kimberley, Australia. Er, uh, I'm sitting here at my desk with diamonds. With my, and my pen, my feather pen. I'm writing letters. Oh, it's all dirty and fancy. Then his luck changed and he ran into serious financial troubles. Oh gosh, Jolly, please, no financial troubles. I have my diamond here, it's the best. Bah! I kicked down your door. Door cost five million pounds in this day of time. Give me all your money, financial troubles. Oh my god, he's coming with a knife. He oh my god, he's robbing me. We're here for the money. Please don't take my money. I love my money. I owe you nothing. Get rid of this place. Leave my land alone. Leave my land alone. I shall run away. <laughs> Take my hat. It's superpowers. Flip, flip, blip, blip, blip. What? Thugs chased Hanek across the Kalahari to German Africa, pursuing him across the ocean. From Australia. We follow him. Across the ocean to yes, South Africa, German Southwest Africa. Oh, what? To America? Oh my God! They chased me for a long time. They really wanted my money. Okay, you deserve it. Come on. You're looking for adventure. Well, you found it here. The devils are after me, and the police are after them. It's a race that I mean to win. Bye. God! It's all pure Ryder Haggard of Conan Doyle! You believe me? Of course I do! I believe everything out of the common. The only thing to distrust is the normal. He was very young, but he was a man for my money. I think they're off my track for the moment, but I must lie close for a couple of days. Can you take me in? He caught my elbow in his eagerness and drew me towards the house. As I entered the inn porch, I heard from far off the beat of an engine. Run away! Oh my god, it's the airplane! They are looking for me. He gave me a room at the back of the house with a fine outlook over the plateau. I smoked in a chair till daylight, for I could not sleep. <gasps> And the next morning I wanted some time to myself, so I invented a job for him. He had a motor bicycle and I sent him off next morning for a daily paper, which I which usually arrive with the post in the late afternoon. I told him to keep his eyes skinned and make note of any strange figures he saw, keeping a special sharp look out for motors and aeroplanes. Motors are dangerous. And I sat down in real earnest to Scarlet's notebook. Let's read. Oh there's a note here. Innkeeper's study. Let's see, let's read. Portland and place murder in Scotland. Not only police have reason to believe that the Portland place murder has traveled north, uh, yes, into Scotland in his bid to escape the authorities. It has also come to light that the milkman has provided da damning evidence against the flat's owner, Mr. Richard Hannay, in connection to the murder of Captain Theophilus Digby. He told me that he was playing a game, said the milkman. 
He needed to be a milkman for half an hour. What? He said ten minutes? Come on. And I believed him. But he never came back. He took my hat and coat too. The thief. The milkman's uniform has since been discovered behind a hoarding in an alleyway opposite Mr. Hannes' apartment. Fear not, if there is a killer in Scotland, we will track him down, said Lothian and Borders Police Chief Mr. Hamish Smith. We will be putting extra re resources into this manhunt. Should anyone spot Mr. Hannay, a 37-year-old man of average height and build, they should not try and apprehend him. Hannay is known to be a military man with considerable skills with weaponry. Ooh, he's a dangerous man. Right, what's, what does it say here on the back side? The Albanian revolt, rebels release prisoners. The insurgents have released all the prisoners. Prince William yesterday rode out to the outposts. Everything is now quiet here. Carolides, the Greek premier. The state of the Balkans has become the most vexing issue on the international stage. Various failures to resolve the Eastern question over preceding decades have left Europe facing renewed crisis after crisis. Amidst this maelstrom, Greek Prime Minister Konstantin Karolides is regarded as the key stabilizing force in a region beset by regime cha changes, rebellion and intractable terrestrial territorial claim. Not terrorists. <laughs> Alright, what else is there? Oh, something in here. <gasps> There's a book. Uh, not much to do here, though. Nope. Alright, and the desk left here. Oh, uh, what's this? The hills of home. I was born in the land of Scotland when the he heather was turning brown. I grew in the hills of Scotland and wanted to leave my town. I'm born in the land of Scotland. Please take me away. These desolate plains of Scotland are not there I wish to stay. Okay. And this. Chapter 1. What the innkeeper saw. Donald woke up to the sound of hammering. Thump, the hammer did strike. Thump, the hammer pierced his brain. Again and again. The beam above his head creaked as the wind whistled around the small cottage. He heard his grandmother moving about in the next room. His father would be at the river already, checking to see if the eggs had hatched. Okay, chapter one of something. And let's see, we have this, these notes. Uh, information collected January to May 1914, Freckling P. Scudder. Yeah. Let's see, alright, they're all the same. Let's read this book. Um. Oh wait, what? No, this this is a, this, it's the same thing. Back. Uh, what else? Oh, okay, these. All right, Chambers Journal, dear Mr. Fraser, thank you for sending us your latest poem, A Frozen Heart in Summer Days. We will be delighted to publish your poem in the January issue of next year. We will return the manuscript once it has been copied by recorded post. Cecilia Yules, Edward Lytham, editor, Chambers Journal. And by the way, I got a new hard drive, internal, which I'm using at the moment. I just switched, um, or not switched, but I just added it. Um, my hard drive was full, and uh, yes, I haven't recorded for the whole weekend, so I had to take a break. And uh, yes, so I think it should be better right now, hopefully. It seems better now that I'm playing, but yeah. Oh, here is the poem. A frozen heart in summer days. Oh wait, I can't read all this. Last winter our chests were warm, as homely fires burned till dawn. The inn was full with passing trade, a perfect home for travelers' bay. The spring was pleasant, a new life did spring. We cooked up pheasant that fa my father brought in. But things did change as the sun arrived, but things did change as my father died. The place came empty, my thoughts then lost. The passing of life is the eternal cost. Now this summer our chests are cold, the inn no longer the place of old. My heart is frozen like the eternal look on my father's face as his life was took. But life goes on, but life goes on. I take over the business as my father's son. Uh, my dreams will hold, though never gone. My words have meaning, my father's son. Oh, so sad, he lost his papa. And uh, we're back here. All Three little things are done. We're done in here, yes. <gasps> a 
carriage or car. I glanced out of the window. There seemed to be two of them, men in aqua scutums and tweed caps. One was slim, the other was sleek. That was the most I could make of my reconnaissance. Who are these men troubling this inn at this hour? Ten minutes later, the innkeeper slipped into the room, his eyes bright with excitement. Who are they? There's two chaps below looking for you. They're in the dining room having whiskies and sodas. They asked about you and said they'd hoped to meet you here. And they described you jolly well, without your boots and shirt. I told them you'd been here last night and gone off on a motor bicycle this morning. And one of the chaps swore like a navvy. Oh my god. So good at keeping secrets. I made them tell me what they looked like. One was a dark-eyed, thin fellow with bushy eyebrows. The other was always smiling and lisped in his talk. Neither was any kind of foreigner. On this, my young friend was positive. <laughs> I took a bit of paper and wrote words in German as if they were part of a letter. Take this down and say it was found in my bedroom and ask them to return it to me if they overtake me. Okay. Fuck does it said shh black stone see schwar since yes I know there's Schwartz or something black but whatever Scudder had got onto this but he could not act for a fortnight I doubt if I can do any good now especially as Caroline is so uncertain about his plans but if Mr T advises I will do the best I mine beste ne. Your paper woke them up. The dark fellow went as white as death and cursed like blazes. And a fat one whistled and looked ugly. They paid for their drinks with half a sovereign and wouldn't wait for change. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Get on your bicycle and go off to Newton Stewart to the chief constable. Describe the two men and say you suspect them of having had something to do with the London murder. You can invent reasons. The two will come back, never fear. Not tonight, for they'll follow me 40 miles along the road, but first thing tomorrow morning. Tell the police to be here bright and early. Oh my god, his life is now in danger. He set off like a docile child while I worked at Scatter's Nose. I. <laughs> Aha! I had a sudden inspiration. Scatter had said Julia Chechenia was the key to Caroline's business, and it occurred to me to try it on his cipher. It worked. The five letters of Julia gave me the position of the vowels. What the hell? Chenyenye gave me the numerals for the principal consonants. I scribbled that scheme on a bit of paper. In half an hour I was reading with a whitish face and figures that drummed on the table. <gasps> Sudden inspiration! What did it say? Come on, you can't leave me hanging like this. Come on! That evening we dined together. Out of common decency, I had to let him pump me for information. I gave him a lot of stuff about lion hunts and the Maribel war, thinking all the while what tame businesses these were compared to this I was now engaged in. Oh my god, there are owls in the night. When we, when we went to bed again, I sat up. Oh. Out. What happened? What did you decipher? What did they say? I had finished Scudder's book. <gasps> oh my god. Alright, you know the deal, dudes. I'm gonna end this episode right here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Gracias por ver. I wish the finest day, my dudes. And until next time, hasta luego.